Welcome to the Tepper School of Business Multimedia Series. For more information on the Tepper School at Carnegie Mellon, please visit us at www.tepper.cmu.edu slash multimedia. And now, here's your selected video. When we're thinking about managerial compensation, one touchstone that comes out of my research with my colleague, Professor Gale, here at TEPA, is that managerial compensation has always been higher than average wages. In particular, when we look at managerial compensation over the last 60 years, what we find is that compensation has increased at about the same rate as national income per person. At different points in history, the public has been angry at the amount of compensation that managers get. So for example, if we looked at, new, at newspapers, say 60 years ago, we would find articles in which the public was angry at the amount of, um, at, the, at, the, at the size of the managerial compensation packages. So it's not as if uh, the public is outraged now and has never been outraged before. This is not a new issue, it is a recurring issue. That still leaves the question as to why does the public take it out on CEOs as opposed to other high paying jobs? Well, CEOs are paid to represent their shareholder interests. The reason why shareholders and the board of directors should be allowed to set their compensation without the interference of outsiders is because they're the people that know by far the most about the company. They will be able to work out how to pay the manager enough to keep him on board, but also incentivize him so that he will work in their interests. One of the um, ideas that had been floated by the current administration about a year ago was that managers should receive a wage that is somewhat comparable to everybody else and that their compensation should not be tied to how well the company does. This discussion was phrased in terms of whether managers should get bonuses or not. Now my research with Professor Gale shows that if we took away the incentives that align managers to their shareholders, we would see the value of firms fall each year by between about one to eight percent, at least for the industries that we looked at. Now if that was to happen, then what we would see is that over a period of maybe five to ten years, a goodly portion of the value of public equity would fall to about half of what it is now. This seems like an extreme prediction. This seems like a, a, an, a, this sounds like a very surprising number. But let's put that in context. What about other countries in which most business is run by governments? What has happened to their wealth? How quickly did they grow? When we compare it with countries that have actually done it or have a history of doing it, these numbers don't look extreme at all. Of course, our estimates don't come from what goes on with other countries. These estimates come from looking at detailed observations of returns of the company over a period of 50, of 50 to 60 years, looking at the compensation that executives got, and doing some, if you like, forensic searching to infer how the performance of the company would have changed if the manager hadn't had his incentives or, in the very rare cases, her incentives aligned with those of the company.